Hello, my name is Dr. Demetria Rujo Shabazz, and I am uh, on the board of registers for the town of Amherst, Massachusetts. And today we're going to be focusing on our new town clerk and her many roles within this community and on voting. So I'd like to introduce our guest, Shavina Martin. Shavina, hello. Good morning or good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> um, Shavina, thank you for joining us. Uh, Shavina is a lifelong resident of the city of Springfield. She received her Bachelor of Arts in English from American International College and an Advanced Paralegal Certificate from Bay Path University. Go Bay Path! <laughs> I've taught there, so I know um, the folks are really wonderful. Shavina's career path includes experience in optometry, banking, medical billing, and entrepreneurship. However, in 2013, she discovered her passion for elections and municipal government. Initially hired by the City of Springfield Board of Elections as part-time election assistant, Shavina excelled and was promoted to full-time election assistant within six months. That's pretty rapid. Five years later, she was promoted to the election specialist position, which ultimately led to her appointment as the Amherst Town Clerk. She's single with no children and uh, no fur baby, so, so no pets, but we are so glad to have you here in the town of Amherst, Shavina. Thank you again for joining us. Shavina, You're welcome. can you talk a little bit about um, what led you here to Amherst and uh, what does a town clerk do? Sure. So. Um... I absolutely, I, what I left out of my bio is I had, ever since I was six years old, I always wanted to be an attorney. Knew that that was my career path. Um, and I have struggled, I have always struggled with standardized testing. And so I had uh, taken the LSAT two times and both times fell short of the mark by six points of where I needed to be um, to gain acceptance at Western New England University. When I first started, it was still Western New England College. And um, so one of the things I used to always say is I never wanted to get into politics. <laughs> mm. uh, I was like, I never wanted to get into politics. And lo and behold, um, right at the height of the, um, when the we had the mortgage crisis and things like that and the market dropped and we found ourselves in you know our generation's uh, <clears throat> uh recession and depression i was unemployed and you know when you have student loan debt and you have a mortgage you know you're looking for a job and so that's what i was doing so i was applying everywhere and it was the city of springfield that you know was the first to say yes and i had no idea what uh, being an election assistant were, consisted of, but you know, just based on the job description, I was like, I think I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. And when I got hired, and you know, it was everything uh, about municipal government, um, unless it's specialized like in science and things like that, you kind of learn it on the job. And I just, when, I don't know, when I got there and I the the environment and just learning about elections, I had no idea. Um, as a registered voter who's been voting mm -hmm. since 18, I never knew um, the behind the scenes. And and I uh, when I began, it was right after um, Senator uh, Kennedy had passed, so we had a special election. Oh, so wow. in my first, right uh, uh, two weeks after I got hired, we had a special election, and then Springfield had a special election for the casino referendum. So in 2013, um, I was kind of thrown into the fire. There were five elections in that one year. That's a lot so that's how I was able to move straight up. And I just took to it. I have no idea. I just took to it. And it just has become part of a passion that I absolutely love all of it, all of the moving parts. Um, fast forward, um, you know, I had moved up as far as I could move um, in Springfield. So being the election specialist was right under the commissioner. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and that would be the next progression up in Springfield would have been the election commissioner. 
and that department was full of um, hardworking young women. Um, and so nobody was retiring. <laughs> they still are not going to retire. They probably still have about 30, 40 years before they're towards retirement. And in municipal government, that's the typical um, span. Most people mm -hmm. stay 30 or 40 years. So um, one actually, just like yourself, uh, Dr. Shabazz, uh, one of the um, board of registrars had seen the opening the first time the town clerk when Sandra had originally uh, retired. Uh, and so he had said, I think, you know, he came when he, they had a meeting, um, one of their quarterly meetings, and he goes, you know, there's an opening uh, in Amherst. And he had just put it out there to all of the students, you ladies, you know, you should think about applying. He goes, it sounds like a great, you know, position. And so I was like, I don't know. And I went ahead and I applied and I went through the uh, interview process and I wasn't selected the first time. Uh, and so last year when the position reopened after Margaret left, I didn't apply. So um, that's a, it's a, it's a, one of those, um, I call it when opportunity knocks at the door because I didn't reapply. And I was working and preparing um, for the uh, November election when um, the HR director, uh, Evelyn, she contacted me. She said, hey, we still have this, you know, the position is reopened. We still had your application on file. We were wondering if you were still interested. And I was like, sure. So we kind of, you know, I gave, I sent over an updated resume and um, met with Paul the second time. And, and it was quick. And I got the appointment. <laughs> and wow. so here I am. Um, and so the things that appealed to me about the job was in the difference between Springfield and Amherst and a lot of mm -hmm. communities, um, because of the population size of Springfield, the clerk's office and the election office are separate. Here in town, I do it all. So I have, I call them subtitles. I'm the town clerk with a laundry list of subtitles. <laughs> mm -hmm. So in addition to being the town clerk, I am um, the registrar of voters. I am the records access officer for public records requests. Um, I am also um, a justice of the peace. I'm a commissioner to qualify so that I can swear in all of our elected officials and anyone who gets appointed to any border committee um, and all of those titles that come with being a town clerk. And I absolutely love the position um, because I have a passion for elections. That's, you know, the underbelly of the, of the role. But the town clerk learning vital records and all of those things, I love to learn. And the challenges that come in the role are what keep me interested and keep me hungry. <laughs> it's amazing. It's, it, you don't realize how central a town clerk is to the running of this community. It yeah. is. We, um, we are truly, you know, part of our role is um, the biggest part of our role is handling vital records, which is vital to every community in a state. Um, we handle um, all births, deaths, and marriages, so all walks of life. From the day you're born, you get married, until the day you pass away. We handle it all here, and it's been more important in this season, especially with COVID. And I won't, I don't want to jump ahead, but we'll get into, you know, um, the how vital we are to a community. And in addition, we handle all business certificates. So, you know, we get entrepreneurs and young people who are coming to start businesses. We have our, you know, our um, lifelong businesses that have been a staple to the community that renew their licenses, you know, every four years. So it is, it, our office is central to many, many part, moving parts within the town. So that's, that's interesting because you had been on the job. I mean, uh, relatively new hire, you had been on the job um, for a, a pretty short time. And then all of this hit in terms of the quarantine and COVID. Um, how has your job changed since the quarantine? The job itself has, it's improved. <laughs> That's what I will say. Um, so personally, um, COVID and the shutdown and, and quarantine has been a blessing for me personally being um, a new town clerk and a new department. Um, and while I love the public, I absolutely love the public, um, having the restrictions and having the isolation from the public has allowed me the opportunity to really get a handle and learn the role of being a town clerk and to be able to um, develop as a town clerk 
to develop as a department head and to really build a rapport with my um, with my staff. You know, I came in uh, about a week and a half before the November um, local election. And so, and it was just elections back to back. So we had our local election in November. As soon as we wrapped that up, we had um, early voting passed for the presidential primary. And then right after that was the presidential actual primary election. So that's where we were in the in my like first 90 days. So I was still in my election mode. And so I, that's how I was able, that's how I was operating. And so it didn't allow me the time to really get adjusted and acquainted with the office and with the staff. We were just boom, 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 moving. In this season, we've been able to slow down. So what we did was part of the town itself shutting down um, we built a contingency plan and we kind of went back to the basics um, because our office handles so many different things. Um, one of the things that Paul asked us, town manager Bachman asked all department heads was review your department and what are your vital roles because those are going to be the things that we focus on. Because sometimes we have a lot of roles that are kind of um, that have been additions that we do as either a courtesy or things like that that aren't the main focus of what we do. And so getting back to that has been helpful. And for instance, and it, it, you know, we were preparing right after the March election to prepare to get into dog license season. I didn't have any experience with dog license. And so right away, um, you, you know, residents know um, things that are cyclical, like, you know, our property tax, when dog licenses are due. So we had like in that first week when we shut down to the public on March 16th, we had already had like 300 dog licenses that were that needed to be processed but we were able to do that and do it in a timely manner where people's checks didn't start to stale date and things like that um because we were close to the public and we weren't performing at full capacity we were really down to the basics of vital records dog licenses business certificates so you came in right before the November election. I uh, was appointed uh, one of the board of registrars. Can uh, you explain uh, to those watching, what does a board of registrar do? Um, mm -hmm. And how do they work with you uh, within the town? So our board of registrar, we're required to have a board of registrars that is three or more members. That's mandated by the Mass General Laws, um, and everyone has to be representative of all political parties. Um, we can have a minimum of three in your advisory, um, in your capacity, in that we meet um, as often as we need to to discuss things that um, are um, relevant to elections, the operations of elections, the office, um, and we we discuss those things. So when we meet. We discuss anything that's upcoming in elections. We go over what everyone's roles and responsibilities are. Um, and then you all give us feedback based on what you hear from the public. Um, and you will, can make, just, you know, you can make um, observations and suggestions on maybe ways of improvement or policy changes and things like that. So you're an advisory committee um, and you're, you get appointed by the, um, by the town manager for a term and it's either, it's usually two years. Some are longer. The MGL does not state the length of your appointment here uh, in town. Um, the town manager typically does it on two years just to see where you are and how you're feeling and if you're comfortable. But yeah, so it's been a pleasure working with um, everyone. You all have been vital for us. You've been an extra set of hands and ears because you do, you have that ability. Part of your role and some of the powers that you have um, are that you guys are key on election day. Um, and you can go out and perform the same duties as I can. So you can go out and oversee all of our polling locations. Um, and you were vital during early voting. <laughs> you guys were very vital on early voting. You helped do our hands on on election night. And part of your role also includes um, you review all provisional ballots and you determine whether or not those are, um, if they are going to be accepted. And I don't think many people understand or are even aware of that, that you all, we have a special meeting um, right after the elections and you all review all provisional ballots. I was not aware of it. And it's mm -hmm. actually been a, a really informative and exciting uh, way in which I can play a part in not only the elections, but 
in um, our town's uh, government. So I've mm -hmm. been really pleased, particularly with your clarity. I think it has made my role as a board of registrar um, easy, you know, knowing what we're supposed to do and when. So I, I hope that, you know, when people watch this, that they really appreciate what you're doing in town, what your role is, and other volunteers, such as uh, the Board of Registrars. Speaking of elections, uh, of course, we have another election coming up um, this November. Are there any um, laws or policies um, that are recent that we should be aware of? as the voting public, uh, such as mail-in voting, such as early voting, how is that going to operate in 2020? So there is, there's been a lot of legislative change. So beginning uh, right after COVID. So once we went into quarantine, um, our legislators and our governor knew that we were gonna need to respond to COVID. We knew that this is a state and federal election year. And we, meet, we knew that um, many of the changes surrounding elections was going to require legislative change because most of the elections are regulated by state and federal law. And so with that, um, our local state reps um, and our senators and our congressmen and women, um, they began developing bills around that. So I was, um, I had the fortune, the good fortune of being able to, uh, I'm a first, I'm a member of the Massachusetts Town Clerks Association. So um, that's an association with uh, all of, that any clerk in the state can be a member of. And so they work um, closely in conjunction with our legislators. And so um, myself, um, state rep Dome had reached out to me. There were several bills that were uh, created. Um, and so they were asking for, you know, our feedback and input on those bills. So I began reviewing bills uh, in late April, going over the different bills that were being proposed by the different um, state reps and legislators, just to develop a plan um, on how we could respond to COVID and make in-person elections and early voting and things like that. Because, and just as a little background education, so, um, and for our voting public. Um, the easiest way to think of elections is every year there's an election. Elections are dictated by if it's an even number year or if it's an odd number year. So all, <clears throat> excuse me, all of your local elections occur in odd number years. Um, and many towns have annual town meetings because that's what's required by the mass general law. Even numbered years are always state and federal elections. And so in even numbered years is when we will have early voting. Um, and early voting um, when became effective in 2016. And so, um, and that was by legislative move. There was a group who had that as a ballot question, the ballot question made it on the 2014 ballot and passed and went into effect for 2016. Mm. So we are now embarking, 2020 embark makes the third year or the third time that we've held early voting. 2020 has been um, significant and historical for a number of reasons. Um, initially, early voting was only in October and it was only held um, in advance of the general November election. Mm -hmm. um, and there was legislation that passed last year so that we could have early voting for the presidential term. And so now these bills came about in response to COVID to allow early voting for September, our September state primary. So our state um, seats are up. So your state reps um, and depending on your district or your um, where you are, um, it could be your registrar probate and those state held seats could be up for re-election for September. Now, November is always the general election. So you'll have all of the state seats plus the federal, um, the presidential election will be all on, all on one ballot. September's election is what we call um, a uh, partisan election. So there will be ballots, there will be several ballots based on political party. And so um, in the state, we have um, Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, and Green Rainbow. So there'll be those four ballots. And then if you are an independent or in the state of Massachusetts, what's known as an unenrolled voter, you get the option to choose which of those four ballots that you can, um, that you can vote on. 
November, it'll be down to um, just the Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, and Green Rainbow, if there are candidates for all four parties um, for November. Just, that's my election geek. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I also like to educate the voters and the public so that they will know what to expect whether they choose to vote by mail or if they go out in person. Um, and with that, getting back to the legislation. So fast forward, we got down to uh, a bill last month um, where both the House and Senate had agreed upon the language um, for the bill that would go before the governor for the governor to sign. And so that bill uh, went into conference committee um, the last week of June. And so, because some of the language differed. And so they came to an agreement last week and it made it to the governor's desk right after, right before 4th of July. So the, the governor received the bill on last Thursday and then he signed it on Monday <laughs> of this week. So July 6th. So everyone, you're getting this hot off the press. <laughs> right. And so here it is, <laughs> hot off the press. So we will be having early voting for the September primary, and those dates are the following. And we'll and I will do later on. Um, I those are going to be up on the town clerk's page. Uh, they're up on the secretary of state's page, and then we'll do our PSA. And we'll so have it up be, on Amherst Media as well. We'll put it up on Amherst Media. So here's some of the changes. So early voting will be um, beginning Saturday, August 22nd through Friday, August 28th. Um, the law has required that we offer early voting in person on the weekend. So that's August 23rd, 22nd and 23rd, Saturday and Sunday. And um, we haven't set the times yet um, or the location. Um, and so that information will be forthcoming uh, in the weeks to come. It'll be really soon. Um, we're ironing out some things there. So TBD. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, election day is September 1st. Um, one of the other things that occurred is there will be early voting in October, and October begins, and I'm just going to check my notes because mm -hmm. those dates have changed us several times, but I want to get everyone the final dates. So for October, October uh, is a longer period. So typically in October, uh, early voting is 11 days before the general election, so it's going to begin uh, Saturday again, October 17th, and run through Friday, October 30th. Uh, and so again, those dates and time, uh, those hours and the location have yet to be set. So TBD, um, and we'll keep everyone posted on that, and ha you'll have well enough notice. And if you are going to um, opt to vote by mail, then those dates, you know, you don't really have to be concerned. Now, what to know about vote by mail? So everyone. Part of the legislation that changed as well is it required that the Secretary of State mail every registered voter in the Commonwealth a uh, 2020 vote by mail application. So every registered voter will receive that. It will come postage paid uh, with a postage paid envelope and it will be addressed to your local uh, town clerk's office. So if you choose that you would like to uh, vote by mail, you fill that form out and you just send it right back to us. And then once we receive the ballots, we will mail you a ballot. And your ballot, the envelope for your ballot, your, to return your ballot will also be postage paid. And those were things that were passed in the law because previously um, the postage would be on the voter. But this time to make it easier um, and as part of the response to COVID, we figured we, the Secretary of State would pick up the tab on that. Um, some other changes, we still have to offer in-person voting. Everyone has the right to show up at their polling location and vote in person. And as such, the Secretary of State is also going to provide um, PPE, so um, personal protective uh, equipment. And that equipment is consisting of gloves, masks, um, and disinfectant wipes. The town is going to go a step further. Um, we're going to have plexiglass and we're going to be doing a lot of disinfecting and sanitation um, in the polling location. So anyone who chooses to go out and vote, the environment will be safe and it'll be safe for all of our poll workers as well. Uh, I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting anything. Real quick, um, said for, sure. the, um, for the mail-in uh, voting, 
it's for registered voters. What if you are a new voter, first time voting, or just moved to this area? Um, can you get something uh, to do a mail-in ballot? I'm glad you asked. That's a great segue. So the other um, part of the legislation that changed as well is it extended the deadline for registering to vote. Okay. So originally the deadline to register to vote in time for the September primary was August 12th. That de deadline has now been moved to August 22nd, which coincides with the first day of early voting. Um, and there are multiple methods for registering to vote. So anyone who is not a registered voter, or if you now reside in Amherst and you were registered in another city or town and you need to move your registration here in town, you will need to do so by August 22nd. You can do so right on the Secretary of State's website and it comes over to us electronic. You can mail, you can call us and we can mail you a voter registration form. You can complete it and mail it back to us. Um, and if you go to any state agency, so if you go um, to the registry to either renew your license or to register a vehicle, you can register there. If you happen to sign up for MassPel or WIC, any of those state services, they can register you to vote as well. Thank so those, you. so that's, um, and then the deadline for uh, the uh, November 3rd election, the deadline to register to vote will be Saturday, October 24th. Same, same thing. Now, once you register to vote, if you decide that you want to, um, that you would like to vote by mail, you can simply, we have the application up on our website right now, or you can call us and we can send it to you. And you can always email that back to us as well. We set up a brand new email box about a month ago called vote at amherstma.gov. So you can fill that application out if you have the ability to scan it you can scan it and email it back to us or if you can, if you take a picture of it you can then upload your picture and email it over to us as well. great so these are all new fresh off the the presses so to speak uh policies and laws that you've brought to us thank you yes. so much for being a uh, part of that decision making on the state level and then bringing that information uh, back to us in the community. That's really yeah. valuable. Um, I'm going to have to have you back uh, to talk about what, something that I think is really exciting and really important. You have a passion, as you mentioned, for public service and uh, working within municipalities. And you want to share that passion and knowledge with younger people and mentor them. So I know that uh, we'll have you back to talk about um, possibilities of internships and mentor mentoring uh, young folks in the community to work within town government. Yes. Okay. So real quick, before we jump into that, so I have, sure. there's so many awesome things that we're doing here in the town clerk's office that I want to notify the public um, about and our viewing community. So um, it was something that has been in the works most of the year. And we were, I was already myself and several other departments in town, we were working. So myself, the collector treasurer and IT, we were already working on trying to bring some of our services online and COVID happened. But um, it allowed us to be able to move forward with those things. So uh, we rolled it out on July 1st. So now you are able to request vital records. So you can request a death certificate, a birth certificate, or a marriage certificate online, pay for it online, and we can submit it to you. We can send it to you. And you can also renew your dog license online. Wow. <laughs> so that's so convenient, so, particularly yeah. just in time for the, the new dog park, right? Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, we, you know, town hall is still close to the public, but we did not want to um, hinder residents from being able to conduct business, town business. And so this was one of the things, it was something that we were already thinking of doing anyway, and we were working towards how we were going to implement it. And I was like, well, we really got to do it now because we're close to the public and COVID and people are apprehensive about coming out. And um, there were people who were, we have a drop box on the main street side of town hall which you are more than welcome to always use but you know everyone is comfortable with you know doing things you know virtually 
and it's right mm -hmm. you can do so straight from the town clerk from the um town's homepage. So if you click on e-payments, if you are already set up to pay your taxes and your excise bills um, with, this, with the town, you can do the same thing. We have our own links there and you can choose. And then if you have questions or you're unsure, call us first and then we can walk you through. So Thank I'm super you. excited about that. Thank you, Shavina. So you've already made yeah. things more efficient here in the yeah. town of Amherst. So we yeah, so appreciate that. Things. Yes, and I we I would I would also like to encourage going back to elections and young people. Um, and I want to just say this really quick. So, um, I am a strong advocate in this season for voting by mail, and I would like to um, to express this to two communities, to our um, college students and to our um, senior community, to our senior population. Those are our two most vulnerable um, groups. And so I want to urge everyone to exercise that right. Um, we're gonna be busy. The town clerk's office is gonna be busy regardless. And in the, you know, out of abundance of caution, I would just urge everyone, please exercise your right to vote by mail. Vote by mail, now the law is in place, everyone, it's a temporary law, so it will expire. At, it's like almost like Cinderella. It's going to expire at 11.59 on December 31st, 2020. Yeah. So exercise the right while you have it. Exercise your right to vote. This is also the 100-year mark, mark for women's suffrage. So women, make sure you register to vote. Make sure you exercise your right to vote. Exercise your right to vote by mail. Last but not least, if you are well, and I want to especially ask our, our young people, um, if you're able to, because I know UMass, I know Amherst College has some really strict policies if you're going to be back on campus. Um, the Secretary of State has a push for anyone who wants to be an election worker. We've had our application up online um, all year. If you feel like you want to participate, please do. Please apply. Um, take the time to apply, and it's a, it is a, a lengthy process to fill out the application, but we can use as much help as we can get, and we can use some hardworking, healthy people, and I do. I, I really want to encourage the young people in town to be involved. If you all are, um, especially like our high school students, you all are out of school for the summer. If you're not working, get involved. You can always call me. I can always use you um, in some capacity. Everyone has um, a value and a worth, and I am. I'm a big proponent on mentoring and training up the next generation. I, you know, I want someone to be able to take my job. <laughs> you know, and so that's, you know, and, and it, it would be an honor to keep the legacy going um, and to continue to build um, on what we're, the great things we're doing here in town. And so that's part of why I decided and you know, opted to apply to be the town clerk. And ultimately, um, once I got the position, I that is, I want to open a door for anyone who's willing, anyone who's interested, or it has has wondered. And so, how do I go about that? Because sometimes we wonder about things, but we don't know where to begin. Give me a call. Shoot me an email. If you see me at Big Y, if you see me at, <laughs> if you see me, because you will see me at the following places: Big Y. Marshalls and Target, <laughs> please, by all means, stop me <laughs> or Starbucks. <laughs> stop, stop and ask wonderful questions because yeah. uh, you do want to, to bring uh, young people in. Uh, we Thank hope you. that we'll have you back on uh, soon yeah. and Hi. talk about other things that are going on with the town government, but also yeah. the electoral process. It has been yeah. a pleasure, Shavina. Thank Martin. you town clerk of Amherst, Mass, and I say that so proudly. Um, thank you for being with us uh, today. And uh, we hope that when folks do see you at all of those places, that they say hello and words of welcome to you in this thank community. You. It's a great community, and we can only make it better by having folks like you within our midst. Thank you so thank much, Thank you. It Shabina. is a pleasure and an honor.